Hi, hello, I'm Masa. I'm a founder and XO of Obink, which I founded in 2014. And then we're going to develop the one of the world's first linear scalable private blockchain software named OBDOT. And then I sold this company to the CBA Holdings in 2018. And then since then, I started this YouTube channel. The purpose is very simple. I want to help the people more fully and deeply understand about the potential of the crypto assets and blockchain. Because this is one of the most pioneer te technology in the world right now. Okay? And also, you know, through this channel, I want to develop the ecosystem with you guys together. And then for this time, I'm going to share my thought about, about an investment re review about you know, NKN, uh, which is one of the you know, cutting edge technology, especially about the you know, P2P CDN markets. And it's kind of actually huge, you know, huge potential in the crypto space right now because you know, one of the critical mission on the broad, entire blockchain space is about like, you know, how we're going to build a decentralized internet where points will go. Okay, so let's start. So as usual, this is my uh, from portfolio strategy. So I mainly invest in about you know BTC and all these six categories, you know, which is you know uh, based on my you know market definitions, industry definitions in long term in the blockchain space. And then any kind of categories here, second layer, decentralized CDN. Okay. Then you know my analytical point six analytical, usually I take the six analytical point to review about an each you know blockchain project, the pain points, products, teams and execution power and token economy and hype cycle. So as usual, I take this approach to the NKN too. D, to understand the potential about like, you know, the decentralized and the CDN markets, first thing that we should understand about, you know, the current internet is controlled by tech titans, that, such as the Google, Amazon, Apple, and Facebook. So, you know, blockchain industry try to democratize all in internet infrastructure currently controlled by these players. Then, you know, to execute this kind of democratizations, you know, most, one of the critical technology or software that we have to develop is actually the decentralized CDN. And then one of the major player, or actually also the you know innovator and the, you know and the leading player in a CDN player in a global basis is as Ak Akamai. So you know they're gonna process actually around like over 30% of internet traffic. So without Akamai, you know, internet cannot exist. And actually too. You know, I know, same as like, you know, we can say the Google and Amazon too, okay? So, you know, leverage in blockchain technology in a P2P network infrastructure. So the C NCAN is one of the cutting edge players to democratize those infrastructure, okay? But it's actually also the great point to start this project at this moment, which is related to the, you know, number one, pain point analysis, okay? So pain point, 5G mobile internet requires distributed base station antenna model. What does it mean? Let me explain about it, okay? So, first of all, you should know about the 5G a little bit more, you know. So, you know, 5G is the you know, latest generation mobile internet technology in the world. And it compared with 4G, you know, 4G or 4G LTE, which is, you know, one you know, generation behind with the 5G. You know, 5G, they can process, you know, almost like a minimum level of five times or 10 times, actually maximum level of 20 times faster mobile internet for user, for us. Okay, so it's great innovation happening in the mobile internet space. Right, but here's the one problem, which like you know, privacy technology allow us to access a mobile internet much more faster and much more comfortable way. That is why you know, user like you know, the traffic on a smartphone space on a mobile space you know skyrocketing starting from 2020. So 2020 is also kind of like you know, the first year that you know 5g you know more mobile internet will you know, start adapt start about the mass adaptations and then that is why a lot of like you know analysts you know forecast that you know mobile internet traffic is skyrocketing starting from 2020 but this is just the beginning like 2001 2022 like you know since like this kind of growth in the traffic will happen you know you know mobile you know internet space so like you know a lot of like you know industry players are seriously focused on how we're going to build you know the very stable and powerful infrastructure to maintain these five mobile internet experiences of the user. Okay. Then we have to have actually a very serious problem, you know, in the transition from 4G to 5G. It's actually an antenna problem. So in the 4G, you know, in the main like you know the network resource you know, distribution model is actually based on the you know high powered you know antenna tower like this kind of very centralized model. So like sometimes you're gonna see some kind of big antenna in a city or town or something. Those are typically, 
you know, it's only for like, you know, for mobile internet. So they're going to build like, you know, those kind of big antenna that distribute the network resources in smartphones. But unfortunately, you know, 5G technology, since it's more, you know, that, you know, well, I would say kind of, you know, the technology itself is more like, you know, more elaborated or sophisticated one. So because of that reasons, you know, the network resource power in 5G is cannot, you know, go across like some buildings or like, you know, this kind of, you know, the wood tree or something in the housing stuff too. So many like, you know, the industry related people, you know, so seriously worried about like, you know, how we have to develop more distribute like an antenna network, just like this type of like, you know, model in a five six generations. But here's the one problem here, because like, you know, once we're going to take this kind of like more distributed antenna, you know, I know building, you know, model in a five six space, you know, it requires a lot of human you know, HR cost to distribute this hardware, but also additionally, you know, they have to pay for more like, maintenance cost for the inch antenna. But you know, in a central like model is more efficient because you know all the people go to those kind of big antenna and many that one too. But in a 5G, it seems like those are so distributed in a house environment, the time you know, the city environment, you know, in our daily life. So it's kind of a little bit you know, you know for the 5G like you know, a telecommunication player, a mobile carrier player have a, you know kind of business model transformation will be required to in long term infrastructure development and maintenance stuff too. But actually, the blockchain provides a very scalable and a sustainable solution for this because, like, like any can provide more, you know, user-driven like an antenna network on you know 5G mobile internet spec and on 5G mobile internet experiences, which is actually a much more sustainable way because you know user themselves, you know motivated with the actual incentives to develop such kind of network, you know, to maintain their mobile internet infrastructure in 5G, in 5G generations. And if it is actually kind of, which kind of like, you know, motivational stuff or momentum, and it reminds me like, you know, some people also know about, you know, the phone. So they used to be built like, you know, you know, democratized and you know, Wi-Fi network, and then they, you know, distributed those kind of Wi-Fi and hardware. And they, once you're gonna buy those kind of hardware in Amazon, you can share your mobile internet in a public user. But, so here's the things like, you know, phone is actually the brand here economy based one, just like a Wikipedia. So not only, about, you know, there's no like, you know, incentive, incentive that's not, you know, not gonna distribute it about, you know, you know phone play and phone user. Actually, I used to use a phone too. But now, you know, NKN or decentralized CDN, blockchain space with the token economy, user can get the incentives. So it's kind of huge advantage would happen with the blockchain. So this is great, okay? And, uh, and also, you should know about like a CDN market itself is in rapidly growing right now because starting from 2019 to 2024, this is a global number. So, and the CSER, you know, growth ratio was 12.3%. You know, for the six years. And also, you know, the 2024 market projection, 22.1 billion market, you know, cap size, especially this in rapid growth is read by APAC regions and also like, you know, the 5G mobile internet with, you know, traffic increase. So uh, we can see the huge business potential, market potential in any can, you know, decentralized CDN market, right? <coughs> then product analysis. So, they have a couple of, you know, and kind of a couple of the competitor here. So the first competitor we have to, you know, think about is actually corporate distribution and, uh, you know, main, maintenance model by telecommunication, like, you know, a mobile carrier. But I, as I said, like, it's kind of a realistic, a realistic approach because it's require a lot of HR cost. So more like, you know, incentivized, incentivized model about the PDP or democrat, democratized model, it's much more scalable and a realistic idea to, you know, build like, a, you know, the massive scale like in a 5G internet mobile you know, infrastructure in the web, okay? But you know, in a blockchain space, they have a lot of computer like a Bitcoin and a Filecoin. And then <clears throat> one of the key things, you know, key differentiating point to compete with this player is actually these areas. The first one is, you know, horizontal approach here. And the second one is, you know, geographical advantage here, okay? These are like, you know, the Filecoin does not have these elements here, but also, you know, to compete with Bitcoin, you know, the horizontal approach is a unique point in NKN here, okay? So this started from a geographical point. So NKN recently closed a deal with the China Mobile, you know, December 2019. It's actually kind of, you know, quite an advantage to compete with, especially for the, you know, Firecoin, because this data. So 
China is the fastest country to adopt 5G. So this is the anchored data from like, you know, that one of the major like in consortium on the mobile internet. <coughs> and then this blue number is a key because this blue number, you know, shows up like, you know, those user who want to switch from 4G to 5G as soon as it's available. Okay. So, you know, China is the biggest country who have, you know, the, who share the, you know, highest score in you know, these like blue color. Okay. So from that standpoint, you know, 5G mobile internet industry or market itself is going to be started from China market. And any can member, I, I'm going to tell you later, and many from China, you know, or Chinese Americans. So from this perspective, you know, compete with Firecoin, you know, it's more like, you know, in a US player oriented team. So from this perspective, you know, NKN has much more advantage to compete with like an other, like, you know, the blockchain based like CDN player in the market, even like a CDN player and uh, inside like a centralized model too. And then, you know, second one is the vertical versus front horizontal model. Okay. So this is actually kind of analogy from iOS versus like Android. So, you know, iPhone, is the first mover for the smartphone market that everybody knows about it. So they were the great innovator, but their approach is a vertical strategy model. So they have hardware, they have OS, and they have own applications. Okay. But Android is a, you know, heavily supported by Google. It's actually fully supported by Google is they never provide hardware because like a lot of hardware in you know, a player in a smartphone space, such as Huawei or Samsung, once iPhone you know, became like a dominant player in a smartphone space, they're gonna lose their business in a cell phone hardware business, uh, cell, phone, cell phone hardware in the market, right? So from that sense, you know, Android completely take on the same approach with the Windows, like Microsoft model. So they built in a co-partnership with those hardware maker in a global basis to compete with iPhone. Then, you know, the market share in the development stuff that we can see here is like an iPhone actually released in 2007 and then you know their you know market you know, recognition is happening from 2008 to 10 and the Android coming up in 2010 and then during the moment here that you know market share between iPhone and Android almost the same level in 2009, 2009 to 2010 but once you know the smartphone market itself is skyrocketed you know you can see here that the market share in the Android is much more powerful much more you know you know, bigger, massive growth would finally, you know, occur in, a, you know, this smartphone space, okay? So this is kind of typical things about, you know, the competition between vertical and horizontal model. The horizontal model is usually, the vertical model is kind of usually typically took by a fast, uh, fast mover, and also they're kind of more profitable. But think about the market share perspective, actually horizontal model is much more powerful and much more scalable, okay? So from that thing, I, you know, I think, you know, NK has a high potential there. And one of like, you know, my expectation or my kind of full and prediction about like their horizontal partnership is especially about the Brave Browser and the Dance, okay? And this player is also taking their own, you know, DApps model here. And then, but they, they never work with the Tron's, you know, vertical product strategy model because Tron have their like, you know, Tron, Buzz Project, also Bitrend, you know, Decentral CDN, and the DLive, it's a, which is one of, you know, successful, you know, the B2C DApps in a global space tokenized YouTube. So if you want to know deep understanding about the Tron, please check my video about like, you know, the Tron, Bitrend, and D-Line, okay? Then you can deep, deeply understand about the their about constructions too. But think about the potential future and long term, I think any can is like more, any can probably will take more like a horizontal partnership model, and which is more like a scalable. That's what I'm thinking, thinking about, okay? And then team analysis, okay? So their team also very you know, specialized team to execute this idea. So starting from you know, Yambo, he's the founder and the strategy of the system architect. So he's actually co-founder co on chain. Is that you know the birth project okay, in China, and also he's very you know he's also the you know Linux kernel network like you know open source coder. So he has a very huge like you know ten years over ten years experience in the P2B and the mesh network protocol layer. So it's kind of you know right person to execute this you know project. And then second Chen, also very specialized in a, in a mobile carrier and a telecommunication industry. He's also a co-founder. So writing about the strategy and operations. So he founded multiple internal startups, project at the Nokia and Google, and then you know, about, you know, about for the commercialization staff. So he's an expert in a telco industry. 
So that is why, you know, this combination is great, you know, synergy here to execute the idea. And then, you know, Yuling, kind of very young guy, so he's a core research and developer, and he's, you know, he gained, you know, physics, PhD in physics at UC San Diego, so he's very, and also very, you know, professional, smart guy. So he's a kind of full stack, you know, developer. And also Alan is also kind of business development expert because he also spent like an over like 20 years in the telecommunication industry, especially the building switch alliance with an Apple and Amazon, those, you know, also the startup small tier. So like, you know, you can see like they can execute the idea about the between the US market and China market together at the same time too. Now as I said, the 5C industry, you know, first market adoption will happen in China. They are the fast mover there in the market. market. So, you know, they have a lot of advantages there too. And then to supplement the understanding about the blockchain technology or cryptocurrency technology itself to protect the you know, consumer internet, you know, decentralized and access accessibility model. So they also took the very you know amazing guy for the advisor is a doctor Whitfield. He's you know he's actually Turing winner in 2015 with the invention of the you know this one public key in cryptography. So you might know that you know core technology of the blockchain is in a public key cryptography you know, in a hash, you know, hash correlation model. So he's an invented you know, those technology in a very, very early days on the computer science field. Okay. So I think you know one of you know the why you know, they're gonna he, he's gonna receive the Turing Award in 2015 is because of like an invention of the blockchain. That's what I believe in. So from that perspective, you know these in you know, a team member you can see like you know combine like you know you know, team, team power with the young guy and very well background with the specialized telecommunication industry. So it's a team level is quite high, okay? But I think, you know, thinking about the long term, like, you know, more business scalability, they need uh, actually more need, like, you know, the very talented PR, like t uh, communication specialists to expand their, you know, the, their business development staff and, and those kind of contents <coughs> to the global basis staff too. But, but that would be, uh, they wouldn't get hired a, a special person in those fields in later. I, I think so, because their recruiting skills is so high too, okay? Then execution power analysis. So, the NK is it's kind of relatively new startup because it founded 2017, okay? And then, you know, when I looked at the number, this is actually timeline 2019, so kind of reviewing, you know, staff. And then you can see the node development here. That's what I'm especially focused on. So, you know, starting from 2019 January, starting from 5,000 node, but in the end, at least like over, you know, in July, they're gonna release about the 20,000 nodes. And also, they also starting this, and this, you know, 2019 July is they launched the mainnet. It's much faster than Filecoin. So their execution power itself is much faster than Filecoin team. So I see the more powerful execution power in any kind of teams, okay? And also, you know, to earlier than in Firecoin, they already also started about the you know CDN services, just like a similar to the Cloudflare, and with the both like fiat money, you know, like you know, to compete with Cloudflare, they accepted the fiat money payment stuff, you know, but uh, integrated with the Stripe, and also the any kind tokens model with the token economy itself. Okay, so I think you know their execution power is an extra, you know, very high in Team Member too. Then number five, token economy analysis. Then you know. With my six categories, those are investment layer. So their token economy I look at it here, decentralized CDN. Then <coughs> I draw down about their token economy. It's kind of a simple one, the starting point here. So Telco is happy to work with and can to save their cost for 5G network, as I said in before in the previous slide, right? Because you know, they're gonna level and uh, they have to spend a lot of money for the HR cost if they want to build like those kind of distributed P2E based like you know antenna model in the 5G era. But you know, once they're gonna use it, you know, any kind of resources, it's more like you know, democratic way, more like a social networking style. So like you know, much more, you know, co they can save a lot of cost. So that's why you know, cost competitors in you know, case you know much stronger than existing like in a central CDN player because they, you know, develop the, those kind of like server model for the you know, to provide the CDN services on their own efforts, not like you know, on a crowd crowd based one. Okay, so that's the advantage. So that is why you know more node coming to you know you know. In their you know network grows and the more nodes coming in, <coughs> node numbers grow up. You know more distribution uh, network is distributed. That is why, you know more like you know lower price for like looting technology stuff. You know because they have a lot of like you know looting points in a network. That is why you know better they can provide more better customer experience for the user. Then this growth itself is actually you know asset growth and can token because you know 
they can generate a lot of traffic for the NKN token itself <coughs> because you know user who wants to use the like as I explained in the previous you know slides so user who wants to use NKN they're gonna use the NKN token to you know payment those kind of stuff right so they're gonna provide a liquidity here so liquidity generate the lower volatility and the lower volatility generate the more you know long-term investor here so that is why you know more node actually come into or well, actually more clients come into the market here because like you know those kind of price stability motivate to user to pay you know I know those kind of in the crowd for their, uh, sorry, not the crowd for their. <laughs> they are seeding services with any kind of token. So in long term, I think you know any kind of provide like a you know, discount price for the any kind of token model to compete with the fiat payment model. And then you know more like a lot of like you know cast their user motivate to use any can any can and token to use their seeding services because it's cheaper than paying by the fiat currency. It's kind of easy to imagine that, okay? So, you know, these are you know, two growth spiral is correlated together to, you know, the growth entire, you know, in the entire growth spiral network effects on any kind of token in long term. It's very sustainable. And then token economy, last one is governance. I think, you know, they have to grow and focus on growth at this moment. So, of course, you should, they're gonna should need to take like a more decentralized governance model to develop the city network, but I think it should be later. It's okay. We should accept that. You know, we can, we're gonna you know ask them to focus on the growth first, about the more little more centralized management model to ex execute their you know plan and idea. And the final one, hype cycle analysis. So as a usual, this is the Ghana hype cycle in the blockchain space, and the, where is the Anycan is located here. So blockchain data exchange, just like a, you know the Den token or Blade Browser exchange. So it's very, very early stage, unlike a bros project or any other kind of you know, cryptocurrency project so, and to compete with Bitcoin stuff too. So they have a huge potential here and also in this here, okay? So total score, investment or not. So I put the you know, 5.0 for the pain point because 5G internet, you know, mobile internet is a critical, you know, the moment for, you know, whole internet user in a global, in a global space and now they have a very serious problem about how they're going to build the un distributed anti network and to provide you know comfortable like you know very you know smooth like internet experience for the user so this is a huge business opportunity for NKN. so that is why pain point definition is perfect and products is point point because it's a little bit a little early stage so i would say that they have to a little bit more improve a couple of things still i so i put the 0.5 here and about teams you know to build this kind of market, they have very you know, specialist teams, very talented and a lot of like you know, well balanced in a, in a Bitcoin and also like a young powerful player inside on the same team. But I think they should hire more like a very talented PR manager as soon as possible, communication lead. You know, then you know they can you know get more you know strong attention from you know blockchain industry to the, you know to their project, but also like you know consumer side or any other in this industry stakeholder about the CDN mar existing CDN market, the telecommunication industry too. So that kind of PR manager will be in play a very critical role to like you know price goes up and it can and it can you know, talk itself. So that's why I put in a 4.0. But their ex execution power is pretty high, especially compared with the other like you know existing like you know I know competitor in inside like in you know, Firecoin or something. So I think you know I put the 4.5 about the execution power. And the token economy 4.0 because it's actually ma, it's okay, but you know, com let's say compare with like you know, I know the Den token or Blade or something, it, it's actually you know focused on a B2B you know business development model. So from that perspective, actually, but kind of sales cycle or like you know the stats growth model in a B2B market space is a little bit usually slower than B2C model. So that is why from that perspective, I. Suppose that you know their my start development in the token economy a little bit takes a little bit more to generate entire like growth spiral model. So that is why I put the 4.0. Okay, it's not actually not about the governance model. It's more like you know execution of, or network effects on the token economy. Okay, and the hype cycle is a 5.0. It's the best because like data exchange will be the biggest one of the biggest like you know the market in crypto space, but still very early stage, and they focus on very you know good pain points about data exchange, you know, market stuff in long term. So, you know, hype cycle, you know, in a sense, in, from that sense, the hype cycle, you know, they have to get the maximum score here. So the total score here is 27.0. The total is 30%, so, uh, 30 points. So from that sense, I, I think, you know, NCAN is a pretty good one. It's worth to invest. Because like, you know, still their market cap is very cheap. 
And uh, like, you know, switching from C to C0, so it's kind of, you know, very similar to my uh, sweet spot, but a little bit earlier. But think about the their, like, you know, network, a P2P network on over like 20,000 nodes, and also like their software already released, and a very special team, and a focus on very good pain points. I think this project have a very high potential grab, you know, the 22 billion market and global base, okay? So uh, that is all, okay? So for this time, I leave you at any can, but also I make a lot of interesting video about the crypto project, any other blockchain project, also, you know, crypto related to news or analytical stuff, including entire themes of the blockchain. So uh, stay tuned, thank you for watching, bye.